Good morning students. Sairam. Welcome back to your English online session. Children, I hope you all had done well in your second unit test. Now let us continue with the lesson 4.2, the storyteller part 3. Let us learn some new words and how to frame sentences. First one, prowling. Prowling means to move about restlessly in search of a prey. For example, I could hear someone prowling around outside. Next one, leaps and bounds. It means with unexpectedly rapid progress. The total number of species on the planet appears to be growing by leaps and bounds. Undermine it means weaken or damage. She tried to undermine our friendship. Now children, before proceeding with part 3, let us have a quick recap of what we had learnt in part 1 and part 2. The Storyteller by H.H. H. Munro, also known as Saki. It revolves around three kids who were travelling with their aunt in a train and a fellow traveller, the bachelor. The children were irritating their aunt and also the bachelor with their activities. So to distract them, their aunt tells them a story about a kind-hearted girl who was saved from the mad bull by the people who liked her righteous behaviour. The children questioned the lesson that their aunt was trying to teach them through that story. Hearing the story, even the bachelor lost his patience and he had a doubt over aunt's storytelling skills. The aunt was offended and challenged the bachelor to tell them a better story. So the bachelor tells them a story about a girl named Bertha who had won medals for her goodness that she used to pin in her dress all the time. The prince was also impressed by Bertha and had allowed her to walk in his park once a week as a reward. So we had completed till here in part 1 and part 2. Now let us proceed further. Bertha was rather sorry to find that there were no flowers in the park. She had promised her aunt with tears in her eyes that she would not pick any of the kind prince flowers and she had meant to keep her promise. So of course it made us feel silly to find that there were no flowers to pick. So she was feeling very sorry because there were no flowers in the park. She had promised her aunts that she would not pick any of the prince flowers in the park and she had meant to keep her promise. But then it was silly for her to feel that because there were no flowers in the park to pick. Why weren't there any flowers? Because the animals had eaten them all, said the bachelor promptly. The gardeners had told the prince that you couldn't have animals and flowers. So he decided to have animals and no flowers. There was a murmur of approval at the excellence of the prince's decision. So many people would have decided the other way. So children, when there were no flowers in the park, immediately the question cropped. Why weren't there any flowers? So the bachelor, he replied immediately, okay, without any delay. Promptly means without any delay or immediately. So what did he reply? Because the animals had eaten them all. And the gardeners, they had told the prince that he couldn't have animals and flowers. So he decided to have animals and no flowers. And immediately there was a murmur of approval at the excellence of the prince's decision. Because many people would have decided the other way. Means they would have chosen flowers rather than animals. There were lots of other delightful things in the park. 
there were ponds with gold and blue and green fish in them and trees with beautiful parrots that said clever things at a moment's notice and humming birds that hummed all the popular tunes of the day so children there were many delightful or you can say beautiful things in the park there were ponds with gold and blue and green fish in them and trees with beautiful parrots that said clever things at the moment's notice and humming birds that hummed all popular tunes of the day so children hummed means children you have heard about the bees okay they used to make a low and steady continuous sound like that of a bee so there were humming birds that hummed all the popular tunes of the day bertha walked up and down and enjoyed herself immensely and thought to herself if i were not so extraordinarily good i should not have been allowed to come into this beautiful park and enjoy all that there is to be seen in it and her three medals clinked against one another as she walked and helped to remind her how very good she really was so bertha walked up and down and she enjoyed herself immensely means immensely means extremely happy okay extremely or you can say very much and she thought to herself if i were not so extraordinarily good extraordinarily good i would have not been allowed to come to this beautiful park okay and she could not have been able to see such delightful things in the park and whenever she walked there were three medals she used to always pin that on her dress okay so there were three medals they clinked against one another as she walked and helped to remind her how very good she really was so the three medals which she had got she used to pin on her dress and whenever she was walking they used to clink okay so it reminded her that how very good she really was just then an enormous wolf came prowling into the park to see if it could catch a fat little animal for its supper the first thing that it saw in the park was bertha her pinafore was so spotlessly white and clean that it could be seen from a great distance bertha saw the wolf and saw that it was stealing towards her and she began to wish that she had never been allowed to come into the park children when she was moving around in the park just then an enormous wolf came prowling into the park prowling means to move around restlessly in search of a prey because it wanted to have a fat little animal for its supper now children supper means it's an evening meal okay so the first thing that it saw in the park was bertha because her pinafore was spotlessly very white and clean so that it could be seen from a great distance bertha saw the wolf and and she saw that it was stealing towards her stealing means it was moving quietly towards her and then she began to wish that she had never been allowed to come into that park she ran as hard as she could and the wolf came after her with huge leaps and bounds she managed to reach a shrubbery of myrtle bushes and she hit herself in one of the thickest of the bushes the wolf came sniffing among the branches its black tongue lolling out of its mouth and its pale gray eyes glaring with rage so children bertha she ran as fast as she could and the wolf also it came after her with huge leaps and bounds and when leaps and bounds mean means with rapid progress very quickly and she managed to reach a shrubbery of myrtle bushes so children myrtle bushes are basically the bush with shiny leaves and a uh, sweet smelling white flowers okay so it's a bush of uh, shiny leaves okay and sweet smelling white flowers so she hid herself in one of the thickest of the bushes the wolf came came sniffing among the branches and its black tongue lolling out of its mouth lolling means children uh, when it 
to hang loosely that is called as lolling out of its mouth and its pale grey eyes glaring with rage now, rage also means uncontrolled anger okay he was very hungry the wolf was hungry so glaring with rage means with uncontrolled anger now, bartha was terribly frightened and thought to herself if i had not been so extraordinarily good i should have been safe in the town at this moment however the scent of the myrtle was so strong that the wolf could not sniff out where bartha was hiding and the bushes were so thick that he might have hunted about in them for a long time without catching sight of her so he thought he might as well go off and catch a little animal instead the children bartha was very right and she was trembling and she thought to herself that if she had not been extraordinarily good she would have been safe in the town but the scent she was hiding among the bushes right so the scent of the myrtle the bush okay, it was so strong that the wolf could not sniff that he could not smell out where she was hiding and the bushes also they were so thick that it might have uh, the wolf might have hunted him hunted about him for a long time without get uh, without catching sight of her so he thought that he might go off and uh, catch a little animal instead so he thought that he will leave that and he will go for a small animal a little animal for its supper bartha was trembling very much at having the wolf prowling and sniffing so near her and as she trembled the medal for obedience clinked against the medals for good conduct and punctuality the wolf was just moving away when he heard the sound of the medals clinking and stopped to listen now she was trembling okay the wolf was about to go but she was trembling with fear so what happened the medal for obedience clinked against the medal for good conduct and punctuality she used to pin the medals on her dress so when she was trembling with fear okay they clinked against each other so there was a sharp or you can say a metallic sound was produced so the wolf was actually moving away then he heard the sound of medals clinking and stopped to listen they clinked again in a bush quite near him he dashed into the bush his pale grey eyes gleaming with ferocity and triumph and dragged bartha out and devoured her to the last morsel all that was left of her were her shoes bits of clothing and the three medals for goodness so children when the medals they clinked against each other the wolf he dashed into the bush his pale gray eyes were gleaming with ferocity now children ferocity means very fierce and violent and triumph triumph means victory he dragged bartha out and devoured her devoured means to eat hungrily or greedily to her last morsel morsel means a small piece and what was left were her shoes bits of clothing and the three medals for goodness the story began badly said the smaller of the small girls but it had a beautiful ending it is the most beautiful story that i ever heard said the bigger of the small girls with immense decision it is the only beautiful story i have ever heard said cyril so children here you can see the children they had praised the story they appreciated the bachelor's story so according to them it was the most beautiful story that they had ever heard a dissentient opinion came from the aunt or children dissentient means she was not agreeing to it okay so she did not agree so a dissentient opinion came from the aunt a most improper story to tell to young children you have undermined the effect of years of careful teaching at any rate said the bachelor collecting his belongings preparatory to leaving the carriage i kept them quiet for 10 minutes which was more than you were able to do so children aunt was not at all happy she did not like the story because according to her 
it was an improper story to tell to young children okay so the bachelor has undermined undermined means children weaken or damage the effect of years of careful teaching because she used to teach the children the advantages of having moral character okay so her stories were having moral endings so at any rate said the bachelor collecting his belongings preparatory to leaving the carriage i kept them quiet for 10 minutes which was more than you were able to do so the bachelor said that at least he was able to keep them quiet for 10 minutes and she was not able to do that unhappy woman he observed to himself as he walked down the platform of temple pom station for the next 6 months or so those children will assail her in public with demands for an improper story so children the bachelor he observed to himself that she is an unhappy woman okay as he walked down the platform of temple pom station and he felt that for the next 6 months the children will assail her assail means attack her in public with demands for an improper story so children here in the story we see that bartha actually children she was extraordinarily good no doubt about that but she had even pride okay she used to wear the or you can say the pin the medals on her dress which was a cause for her gory ending okay so remember children pride has a fall so it, it is not necessary that all stories they have happy ending okay there can be tragedies too so your children we learn that even we are good but then children we should not be proud of ourselves okay remember pride has a fall so children i hope you have understood the story and like the story okay so thank you my dear students take care of yourself sai ram